Hey everybody, Shane here. Let me tell you about my friends at Naked Vine. Located at 1624 Clarkson Road in Chesterfield, Missouri. Serving up all your favorite wine, whiskey, and local craft beers. Stop by and visit them Thursday, December 20th for uh, some live music from Kevin Babb. Friday, December 21st, Pat Liston. And Saturday, December 22nd, The Scandaleros. Uh, I'll be back out there on January 8th with my singer-songwriter storytelling showcase, bringing along my good friends Kara Louise, Cree Ryder, and Drew Schaefer for that one. So do not miss that show. 7 p.m. start, $5 at the door. Full listing of events and everything happening at Naked Vine can be found at nakedvine.net. Be sure to follow along with them on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks, everybody. Enjoy the show. Um, the podcast is kind of like a, it's like a radio show that's not on the radio. It's on, it's on the internet. Does that make sense? Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> that's also like my mom. Uh, it makes it sound more confusing, doesn't it? Uh, it sounds like this. What's up, everybody? This is Kyle Ray, and you're listening to Rock Paper Podcast. Rock Paper Podcast. Rock Paper Podcast. Rock, 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 Hey everybody, Shane Presley here, Rock Paper Podcast, coming to you from St. Louis, Missouri, hanging out at Gaslight on the Hill with Kyle Ray. Welcome to the show, my friend. What's up, Shane? Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, man, this is uh, this is exciting, man. I uh, a lot of how I like to do this show is you. you these are uh, friends of mine. I, I've uh, you know we we see, I see you around at different shows and everything else. Sure. We've kind of been running around the same circle for a while now, but. Uh, I don't uh, know a whole lot about Kyle Ray, and we don't get to talk a lot at shows, being that there's usually music playing and everything else. And right, try not to be yeah. the guy talking during the song, <laughs> right. you know. But uh, I thought this would be a fun thing where we can kind of get to hang out and get to know a little bit more about everything going on. So um, right on, man. Yeah. So thanks for thanks for doing this. Glad to be here, man. This is uh, I guess let's start at the beginning, man. We do. I guess we did we grow up around uh, the St. Louis area. Yeah, man. I was actually. Uh, Born right here at a uh, at Barnes before I was Barnes Jewish back in in '94. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, and I grew up uh, kind of in in St. Louis City. For I lived in Overland for about the first year of my life, um, and then uh, kind of sp- my parents split up, and I, I stayed half of the time in Granite City, Illinois, and then half the time in Jefferson County, Missouri. So for a while, I've just kind of been you know either north or south of St. Louis for pretty much my my whole life. You know. Mm-hmm. Uh, came back here after I stayed in California for just a brief moment and when I came back St. Louis was just uh the warmest home you know so I just kind of stayed here yeah hey, wouldn't you uh and I, I know you uh you play a little bit of everything it seems like uh yeah a little, a little guitar a little drums uh a little bass yeah what uh what was that was that like uh uh your parents or uh when did that kind of all get to, yeah, that, to you that's kind of a it's an interesting thing so my dad has always loved music right um Never really played much, tinkered around on the guitar a little bit. Um, and then my stepdad, who was a really big musical influence in my life as well, he uh, was a, a big country guitar player. Um, and we lived out way deep in, in Jefferson County and stuff, so it's like, to jam, you know, he was kind of like my only, my only jam partner, you know? Well, so I was kind of blessed with that, because now I'm playing, it seems, a bunch of country music. Back in the day, I didn't really enjoy playing the country music. Mm-hmm. I just liked playing with my pop, you know? Right. But uh, that was a lot of fun, so I definitely would say that I think that I picked up my musical influence just off the drive of being around musical people. And, uh, of course, you know, plenty of their friends and themselves to show me pointers along the way, I guess. Yeah. But I think it's about just starting young, man. That's why I love, you know, when I see kids start young, because I'm like, that's what it takes. Sure. Well, yeah, and uh, I guess that's a, probably a good tie-in to uh, you, you've been uh, working at uh, School of Rock locally here in St. Louis and uh, helping out a lot of young kids uh, kind of kind of paying it forward, man. Right, or, yeah, you know. and and some uh, older older yeah, students that come right. in that want to learn, you know. It's, but, yeah, definitely that's the, that's the best part about it today is getting to kick it with, you know, some kids that come in and want to learn, like, Black Sabbath or ACDC or something just, you know. That's really like okay, cool. This kid's got good taste. Sure, yeah, man. I uh, I recently um, the other day at work, I bought this. Uh, well, I bought this uh, hoodie for my uh, show I did the, uh, a little bit ago, and uh, I just wanted like a good you know Christmas hoodie to wear to the show, and I so I found one online, and it was uh, 
Chevy Chase on the cover of uh, Christmas Vacation, you know, right uh, get, on, getting, yeah. uh, getting electrocuted and all that. And like, yeah. And uh, so uh, it it's makes me laugh, And but I, I wore it to work, and I had so many, you know, kids complimenting it or whatever, and like, cool, you know, love your hoodie, and then like, but some of the kids were like, oh, that movie's great, and I was like, Whenever they knew that the movie and stuff, then I was like, "All right, no, I, now now I know you got some cool parents that uh, right. are introducing you to the the good stuff." Exactly. And stuff. That's one of the coolest parts about working at School of Rock too is like getting to see the parents that bring these cool kids in because it's like I really like to tell the parents I'm like, you know, you guys are really the people making this happen because let's be honest, the, the first couple months of playing drums is a noisy is a noisy <laughs> couple months. So if you got parents that are willing to support that, that's that's awesome stuff, you know. Yeah, yeah, man. The, did that was that uh did it kind of start for you with like pots and pans in the kitchen kind of thing? Yeah, or? so funny story. There's actually old VHS tapes, you know, that was uh, pictures of me standing up, just barely able to reach the table, and I could I had to hold on to the table to be standing up, and I was already tapping on the table, you know, and uh, my dad noticed that I was kind of tapping, you know, close to in rhythm, like I would hear stuff and try to stay on that beat. So he kind of bought me drums, you know, at a pretty young age. Uh, a much younger age than my mom approved of because you know, at that point I was definitely just banging but I'd always kind of had a kit in front of me so I have to thank him for that um, so I kind of skipped the pots and pan stage of course you know now I, I'm a weird eccentric person like that I, I'll take pots and pans to the studio and sure. use them on the kit you know but yeah it was it was those pots and pans days though yeah. the, the early can't reach the pedal days there you go I uh man I, uh you know kind of saying that mention uh, reminded me of uh, one time I saw uh, Tyler Bryant and the Shakedown. Uh, we were phenomenal rock band. Uh, if you haven't seen them, you should definitely go do that. Right on. But they uh, most recently just were on tour with Clutch and Seven Dust. Uh-huh. Uh, so uh, they got to open up for them uh, over at Pops a little bit ago, and I, I, I wasn't able to make it that evening. But anyway, I saw these guys play at uh, Gramophone years ago when they were still doing shows over there. Right, the days. Yeah. I was too young to get in there those days, <laughs> yeah. man. And uh, Caleb, their, uh, the drummer, he, you know, he's behind the kit, and they're doing, you know, he's jamming, and then all of a sudden, like, there's a part of the show where he gets up, and he, like, came down on the floor and <clears throat> with his sticks, and he's just like, playing the table and then playing the floor and the stools and the wall and whatever you know he's like just right and it was just fun to like watch him like tap tap something and like oh that sounded cool and then like you know go back to it and like he's making <laughs> making a beat out of whatever and stuff and like right i think that that's kind of the art of being an entertainer as a drummer you know a lot of people think that just because you're you know you're in the back you're sitting down that you're not as entertaining as say the front man or whatever yeah. and i think it's really cool when i see drummers or percussionists in general kind of sure. take the role as the entertainer you know yeah well and like i say and throwing a, a pot and pan in the kit or whatever you know yeah. just whatever the right has the right sound you know it's like a I always uh, always appreciate that. That like uh, there was uh, another one of my favorites is uh, Lincoln Durham. He had uh, on his record he credited somebody for playing a cardboard box. Oh sweet! Uh, you know just because like it was the right made the right thud noise that they, right, they yeah. needed and stuff and so uh, sometimes that's what the the song calls for. Yeah, you know? right. So. As a, a little bit of a producer and stuff, that's kind of what I try to do with any music that I'm playing. It's just kind of listen and be like, what should go here? You know, mm-hmm. rather than what do I want to put here? Because sometimes it's not always the same. You know. All right. Yeah. So, uh, so like I said, you're you're playing uh, drums, uh, you're playing guitar, uh, and things. And uh, I guess when when do you decide like this is what I want to do? I want to put a band together and stuff. It's kind and, of a weird story. Like um, I was always in bands, you know, tinkering around growing up as a kid. My first band was actually called Beyond Regret. Uh, we were way serious about our cover music, you know, in the emo era, of the, my junior high, my junior high days. Uh, yeah probably still find us our stuff you know our social media presence on myspace and bebo (laughs) probably still around uh but after that i just kind of did i just kind of realized that music was my thing and um i was kind of cut out to do whatever it would take to be in whatever situation i could put myself in. i played in metal bands jazz groups in school marching band in high school i just tried to always put myself in any type of musical situation that i could and try to succeed in it and, you know, sometimes that meant that, well, I wanted to play the tuba, but maybe I played the saxophone because that's kind of what came natural to me, you know. So in my, that's the only horn I play is the alto saxophone, but I always really wanted to play trombone and tuba. So yeah. shout out to anybody that has got that ability because those, those instruments are the jams. But 
it was always just about trying to do as much as I could. And that's kind of why I like that I got friends in all these different, St. Louis is known for having our, our clickiness in the music industry. You know, we got a lot of our bands that are friends with other bands and we don't really book shows outside of those kind of clicks, which needs to stop. But I digress because I have a lot of friends that are in all of these clicks, you know, and mm -hmm. I feel like it's just because if you don't put yourself in one box as a musician, it kind of helps out, you know, you're just able yeah. to, to kind of see things as the, the open world, you know. Yeah, I've been trying to do a little bit of that myself. I do um, all so far with the birthday shows and and then the uh, risk for gifts. I mentioned uh, putting that show together recently, and uh, which was awesome for my, you doing that, man. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, that was so, so much fun. Uh, but I've been all these shows I've been doing. I've been trying to do a very mixed genre. You know, they might uh, sort of have a theme, but I try to also in incorporate something different. And even with my singer songwriter shows, I do a lot of different stuff where I want you know. It's not always three people that know each other. I try to introduce new people to right. them, to the mix and try to get, you know, continue to just bring in the community together and stuff. So, and I'm sure the songwriters appreciate you for that too, because that's that's a it's a huge tool to be able to reach out to other songwriters around you in your area, you know, and use each other and for for critiques and stuff yeah. like that, you know. Oh yeah, and then like it's just fun too, like to think of like, you know, it doesn't may 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 not always work, but the whole. You know, idea behind it is hopefully they go out and they collaborate together or do something, right. do something else and make something cool together and things. So, you know, you never know what could happen. So that's uh, why I love St. Louis. It's yeah. like you know we're we're tight knit enough to where we can do that. We can absolutely you know reach out and work with with others around us. You know? Yeah, man. Well, locally, uh, you uh, you can be found playing uh, in a couple of different groups. Um, let's talk about uh, Whiskey Raccoons. You, uh, right. which they they came on the show. Uh, it's, it's been a little while now, right. uh, but uh, Kara and John came on. We sat in, uh, I, guess, I think that was Kara's apartment, and had a right. nice chat and uh, talked about how those two met on, uh, on Craigslist. Yeah, on Craigslist. It, it's that. kind of a funny story. I love those guys, by the way. They're some of my favorite people. Um, we met on Craigslist as well. I had just got back into St. Louis, and uh, was the only, the only person I was playing with at the time was Brad Millaway from Tree One Four, and we were actually doing funny enough an acoustic set right here in this corner where we're recording this you know um and he kind of introduced me to a few people around here and that kind of got me started and i just really needed a little bit of extra walking around money i got on craigslist and seen this really you know cares you know how she writes stuff out all well thought out professional looking classified posts for this band and i looked on their facebook and they you know they're legit and they had fans and music recorded already so i was like you know why not it was pretty, you know, it was nice to see they had a solid page going on to kind of avoid the whole creepiness factor of, like, going to just meet a stranger on, on Facebook. Sure. But, no, it was, or as soon as, or on Craigslist, but as soon as we met, it was, it, we hit it off, you know. Mm -hmm. We kind of knew right that day, we just kind of decided that I was going to join the group and kind of see where it went, you know. Yeah. Well, I think it's cool because, like, they, the, I get, uh, you know, they had their record and uh, more of a full band sound. And uh, but they do a lot. They did a lot of stuff live as an acoustic duo, right? Um, and then, uh, but adding a little percussion to it, you know, it really you, helps. Having, having you with a, that that minimal kit and stuff, kind of uh, yeah, providing that little backbeat to it and stuff. It uh, kind of makes it more of a full show and stuff. And uh, so, thanks, man. I, I appreciate that. I love playing those little those little trap kits. By the way, yeah. uh, so shouts out to Ben. Ben comes and plays with us sometimes too, and uh, he's. That's a really fun, we can kind of recreate the full album experience. Yeah. I really love what, what Kara does with that. You know, we do, um, she's not afraid to strip it down to just her and John to play a coffee house if they need to, but she'll also, you know, add me in for bigger stuff. Yeah. And, um, you know, obviously, like when weddings happen and stuff, we'll be playing with, with Ben, the bass player, as well. Yeah. <laughs> but you can uh, find all things Whiskey Raccoon, uh, wh Whiskey Raccoons on your. Uh Facebook and yeah. uh, Instagram and all that. Uh, a lot of fun pictures on all of our all, all our pages and uh, the the Whiskey Raccoons page as well. Yeah, when you are uh, you guys kind of branching out a little more. You said you are running down to Nashville for a, a gig. We uh, are. We were actually um, we won't be in Nashville. We'll be in Cookville, oh, Tennessee, okay. which is right outside Nashville. Oh. Um, we love it down there. Red Silo Brewery treats us super good. Um, if you guys are ever down to Cookville, please go check that place out. It's got the same craft beer vibe, you know, that we got. They sent us home with a, a growler, a beer piece last time, and a stuffed raccoon, which was, you know, quite the... We had never experienced anything like that from a venue before, you know. But, yeah, that, that'll be a fun trip. We're also kind of expanding our sound as well into, uh, into kind of, like, different 
aspects of music. This new record's really going to be something that's different and new and fresh. Um, funny story about the old record, they went down to Nashville and that all those were kind of Nashville musicians on that record. So now we're going to try to kind of keep it to where it's not a bigger sounding record, but it's going to have a lot of impactful music on it. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. going to be a good sounding record. Very cool. Well, and you guys are in the, uh, I guess, the beginning stages of putting our record together? We are. The writing has pretty much come to a wrap. Um, actually, right after this podcast, I'm going to grab a sandwich and go uh, go over to Limp, where we're going to be doing our scratch recordings this evening. Nice. Um, just kind of a few of them. We're going to just get them out there and do a tangible form and you know how to just play it back and yeah. listen to it. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm excited. Uh, like I said, the, the, the record uh, is all available everywhere digitally and stuff. You can... Uh, Pick up a copy of that and uh, and listen. But I do love that album, and I'm excited to hear some some new tunes, man. So that, right, especially man. Uh, some with uh, some Kyle Ray on there. We are stoked to bring it to you. Yeah, there's going to be a little bit of harmonizing between Kara and I on this record, which Very would be cool. be cool. Yeah, man. But yeah, man. You uh you also uh, most recently, I guess, uh, the new member of Adam Gaffney and the Highway Saints. Yeah, yeah. Right? It's it's been a it's been an awesome ride already, and it's just started. You know. Yeah. I feel like the roller coaster is just now reaching the top of the the mountain, and yeah. it's been fun. So when well, Adam's another excited. one, he's just a, an incredible writer and a, and a beautiful voice. And uh, absolutely, man. And, uh, absolutely. So it's, it's, he's uh, he's kind of a newer friend of mine uh, as well. With, some, with his, uh, you know, uh, kind of being a transplant here to St. Louis and uh, getting established here, and we met a while back. And uh, but I've, it's been exciting, kind of following some of his work in town as well. And uh, now that you're uh, a part of the mix and playing playing some uh you're playing guitar with him right that- i'm actually playing drums oh, for, drum. for adam okay. um i wouldn't i wouldn't be opposed to playing guitar oh, yeah. for adam if okay. that, the opportunity was to come about but um yeah i'm playing drums for him right now and i'm really digging it kendall and brandon and phil and all the rest of the guys in the band have really been you know helping me out since we got together it just seems to flow i love playing music i love being the front man don't get me wrong i love being the band leader but there's something to be said about just being able to show up and do my job and play for an amazing group of musicians that just need me to keep time for them you know that's a a low stress and a really really high enjoyment gig for me you know yeah we, and uh we do have a date uh around here for that uh ju- december 29th you can head out to canton Inn. um what i guess what's uh that's uh like hillsborough or something right i think illinois yeah yeah so you can head up to uh, visit them in Canton Inn and hang out with Adam Gaffney and the Highway Saints on the 29th and uh, have a good old time. Right on, yeah. It sounds like a, it sounds like a blast. It's going to be my first time out there with the boys, and uh, we've had a really good time so far together, so I'm excited to see what this, this big hurrah is going to kind of hold for us. Sure. And that's a little more, uh, if anybody doesn't isn't aware yet, but uh, Adam Gaffney's kind of got a little bit more of that traditional country sound to it. Right. And, uh so uh, it'll be uh, it'll be fun, man. It's like uh, and so you said that that all that kind of stuff was sort of uh, an early influence with your uh, stepdad playing a lot. Right, it's kind of come full circle now. It's like back in the day, I, I learned how to play these grooves, kind of almost. I don't want to say begrudgedly, but I guess that's kind of the word. You know, is definitely uh, not too excited to play these grooves. And now, whenever these guys play these songs, I just can automatically hear this groove that I've known since I was, you know, six years old yeah. that fits right in the tune. And they love it, and I love it. It's kind of a cool thing because, as a, a lot of my friends might know, I'm, I'm a really choppy drummer. I'm a, come from a marching background, so I'm used to a lot of notes. I play a lot of notes, really um, gospel chops, uh, funk, it's kind of my style. With Adam, it's a very minimal style, so it's kind of pushing me into different grounds as a musician. It's making me be more reserved, and it's a good practice. I, I really enjoy it, you know. Yeah, man, very cool. And I think uh, I think hopefully he's getting ready to record. I know we uh, we are something. So yeah, hopefully we will get a, a Adam Gaffney record out here soon too. It seems like right now the uh, the studio is just kind of we're going to be a scratch tracking machine with all the projects for a second, and then you know. Hopefully a couple of months into 2019, everything's just going to be dropping like wildfire. There we go. So I'm excited, you know. Give me a big year. Yeah, right. Man. Uh, well, uh, yeah, you were saying, um, you know, some of the others that you, you, which is, so it's interesting that we talk about two country bands that you're kind of a part of. Yeah. Uh, but you also do, uh, you have a, a blues project. And I do, kind of yeah, the stuff. Roughneck Blues Band. We're, we're currently on a little bit of a break right now, but yeah. you can definitely 
plan to see us next summer out doing our thing. We love doing the uh, the long cover gigs, man. That's our thing. We, we like entertaining and just hanging out with people, man. That's my social group. That's mm -hmm. where I go out to just kick it with the people that are listening to our music and the bartenders that are there serving our friends and all that stuff, you know? Yeah. Um, I'm also in a nameless project right now that I'm actually super excited about that I can't wait to bring you guys. We'll probably have the group on with you whenever the, the next available opportunity is, but that's with uh, Rick Wagner and Joe Rogers. And I'm, I'm playing drums in that project and that is going to be a fun one. There's some fire stuff coming out of the jam. So yeah, I'm, um, I'm pretty ready for that. So you, uh, so what? What do you? Uh, how, yeah, you were saying like you you enjoy being the front man too. You play a little up front and doing some vocals and guitar, and then uh, behind the kit and stuff too. Absolutely. Like, is it you? Do you like keeping that balance, or is there? I do, man. I'm not gonna lie. The front man thing can get stressful when you're yeah. on stage. It's great, but I mean, being a band leader is a stressful thing. You know, you're you're kind of relied, to, you know, on to make sure that the bills of the practice room is getting paid, and you know, the bugs are the gigs are getting booked and. Stuff like that, even sometimes when it comes down to writing the songs, depending on the, the members that you're working with in a given project. Some people are really great players, but don't really have an interest on being a creative interest in the project. You know, they'd rather just play the parts. And that's cool, but it can get stressful trying to write parts for five people, you know? So it's nice for me to have that because I, I need that to fuel my fire. But at the same time, you know, it's nice to be able to just sit back behind the kit and watch, you know, and knowing how tough it is to be a front man just try to be the best drummer i can for these front men you know just try to make their lives easy show up on time play tight you know do what i'm told kind of try to sure. serve the song and i feel like there's a good balance because i can see where they're coming from so it kind of helps me perform for them you know yeah i've never been in a, a band or anything so I like right. it, but my uh I, I can kind of relate because uh in my professional work i used to be a supervisor okay uh, of a you know crew for like eight people right and uh i did that for like eight years and then like you know it wears on you sometimes you just like get sick of it and you're like well now I, and so now i step down and i'm just a part of the crew and right. it's like so it's much it's much nicer just to kind of be a, a team player so instead as a of, supervisor i'm sure you could tell how like you know you can like these guys on a personal yeah. personal basis but sometimes on a professional level there's things that has to be addressed sure. and it's always hard you know it, we're all guilty of we, we say we can't mix you know our work with our pleasure and stuff like that but we're all guilty of doing that in a sense you know yeah. and it's, it's easy to take things personal especially in music because music is a professional industry to me but it's something that you're really emotionally tied into as well right so it's it's really it's one of those tough things to not get emotional on stuff you know yeah but uh but yeah man i uh i'm excited though to see what what uh, 2019 has in store for Kyle Ray and uh, yeah, all man. this stuff. So I appreciate that. There's uh, there's some cool stuff coming out. Um, you guys can check out www.showmebeats.com. Um, I got some production up on there. I do sell hip hop beats and things like that. Yeah, that was uh, you, you mentioned that uh, before we started, and uh, and that's a, a new site of Kyle I didn't know about. And, uh, right. See, I have these. I have these. I have a, a really good uh, mentor. I won't mention his name yet because I'm not. I don't know if he wants me to share this secret. So, I'm, but I'm going to share it with you anyway. It seems that um, it seems it's really hard to kind of uh, direct yourself in one direction when you do as many things as I do. Right. So it's kind of um, the beats thing. I do. But I kind of do it under an alias. I don't do it under Kyle Ray. I do it by my old school, which is skunks. That's what they call me in the, in the beat game. So it's kind of like on, on my web presence, I try not to mix the two, you know. Um, I do do a little bit of production, but when I'm playing music, I try not to be in that production mindset because in my opinion, it's helpful to not have to do both. If I'm just producing, I can listen to someone play a part and go, that was the one, you know, or, or that wasn't the one. If I'm playing it, it gets really complex because I'm biased on my own playing to begin with and you wind up just using the creative mind and the editorial mind at the same time which doesn't tend to work you know but I do I do love doing production you know so it's that part of me is kind of being put on hold right now as I develop my artist but I uh, I do love doing it man it's a part of me that I'll never get rid of for sure yeah well that's cool man like that uh, I've always been a big fan of that too like the fact like uh you know, with a lot of hip hop, and uh, especially when you might make a beat uh, right. for the record and stuff, you know, it's got this, but then like actually be able to recreate that and do it in a live full band and stuff. Like, yes. that's what I love about like, uh, even though they, they still have tables and uh, they just scratch them, but like Matthias and the Pirates and stuff, the fact that they have, you know, a live 
uh, guitar and drums with him sometimes, and, and, and horns and awesome. stuff. And you know. James is the man. He's you know, he's he's the dude for yeah. sure. That uh, but that kind of stuff, you know, is like the fact that it's not just uh, you're not relying on strictly the beat and the production that you can uh, right. actually show some artistry and and play you know play these play these beats live on it and so. Actually, uh, Scrub Adam Estep took me oh, to yeah. see um, Tank and the Bangas whenever they came through after the Lou Fest thing had happened, and they played at the old Rock House, and Scrub played with them. And I love those guys because if you listen to Tank and the Bangas on Spotify, they got a lot of this production stuff going on. But live, the band is smacking, and that brings a totally different energy. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's really what 2019 is going to be for a lot of for a lot of good hip hop artists. I mean, you look at guys like Anderson Pack or anything like that, and they're doing the same stuff too. They'll right. they'll produce the tracks and then throw a band together and, and go give the people what they really need, which is the energy of a live performance. You know, nobody, in my opinion, it's not that cool to see somebody just sing over a backing track. You know, mm-hmm. but if you got a band, you you, you made it. You know? Sure, yeah, man. I I mean, I I think it's all, everything has its place, but yeah, like it, for me, like the live live music where is right. that? So. Uh, yeah, man. But uh, so it's kind of cool that you're getting to kind of do both sides of that. And, yeah, man. Um, I love it. I love it all. I try to just kind of try to touch on as many aspects of the industry as I can. The only thing I really don't do is video and stuff yet. I'm kind of getting into doing just a little bit of stuff, but I figured I'd probably I'd probably stop at music. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Just kind of hit all aspects in there. You know. Well, you did do uh, one video recently uh, with uh, Brad. We mentioned. Oh uh, yeah, that. <laughs> For sure, dude. <laughs> For sure, dude. What? Uh, which uh, I definitely dropped uh, the quote the other day with, when I ran into you at the Oyster Bar and stuff. Uh, oh. For it, sure, dude. I'm sure. Is that like your like life now? Is that like everybody just saying that's that? like that's our tag now, yeah. man. Like, I mean, there's been kind of speculation of me jamming with the Tree One Four Boys for a while now. I don't really know if that's gonna work, but we might give it a try. So you guys stay tuned on that kind of that yeah. kind of uh, a talk. But yeah, we were here the other night just jamming, and uh, Brad just was like, "Come outside," and uh, I said, "For sure, dude." One time, and before I know it, he had the camera on me. So. <laughs> You know how Brad is. He's yeah. such a he's such a great producer, man. He doesn't even know it yet, but that guy's got a mind to just create right. anything out of anything. You know, he needs to be working with film crews, man. For real, he's just brilliant. Yeah, he's uh, he's definitely one of my favorite personalities around town. I, I really uh, he always makes me laugh with his videos and right. uh, and but I love the music too. The that Tree One Four. Oh my gosh, yeah. I just I just was with those guys last night at the Halo Bar. And they crushed it, man. It was awesome. Yeah. I believe. Uh, I think it was the Revivalist was playing it. And well, they were supposed to, and they, had, they got That's sick. That's right, and they, they got canceled. canceled. And then who was the uh, band that played? Uh, Mountain Joy came in and did a free right. show with uh, Title Volume, which uh, was awesome because so. they did. They did a lot of people showed up, you know, for the free show, and yeah. then Halo Bar was pretty full afterwards, and it yeah. was cool. Brad got to play some of his new tunes with Tree, and I was really digging it, man. It was yeah. it was some neat stuff. I just I just was thinking on the way over like how funny like that would be that uh, you know you you do all this stuff you know you're playing in all these bands and doing all this stuff and then like the thing you become known for is saying for, for sure dude. dude you know it man that's just how it always works I mean that's that's just how it would work too you know but I'm not afraid to use it I kind of yeah. like it it's something I do say all the time but right. the for sure dude that was a little over the top yeah. you know but. But yeah, it might be my tagline. You might uh, you might hear that on all my videos from now on. Or I mean, something. I, I think it needs to be uh, you know, t-shirts and bumper stickers. Oh, okay, and, so yeah. it's it's going to that level. We need we need to market this, man. We need to. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, dude. Yeah, uh, no, yeah. Brad's Brad's good with that kind of stuff on the fly. So it, you know, I like it. Yeah, man. Well, uh, yeah, maybe uh, maybe we'll, maybe all that will happen. We'll see. We'll. Uh, no, we'll, for maybe. sure, dude. <laughs> Potentially happen. <laughs> <laughs> But I think I'm gonna isolate that though and make it a ringtone or something like you know have it every time uh, somebody texts me and just have it have it drop for their uh, for sure, dude. Oh, dude, I love it. Yeah. That's great. Let's well, let's get it popping. We need to know? make. I mean, I'm saying like this is all ideas, man. I'm just <laughs> I'm thinking all the time. We can. We hey, can man, make, 2019. It seems like marketable ideas are worth more than gold. You know. Right. <laughs> but I mean, I think everybody will pay a dollar for uh, for a Kyle Ray ringtone and. Oh, uh, for sure, dude. <laughs> You can uh, find all things Kyle Ray on. You can. Uh, he has an official Facebook page. Uh, we have uh, Whiskey Raccoons and Adam Gaffney and the Highway Saints and uh, Roughneck Blues Band all have Facebook pages. You can uh, all find all that stuff. And find more information and uh, right on. when Kyle's coming to a town near you. 
For sure. There's going to be a lot of stuff going on, actually, and this, this new year is going to be a big one for me. I've been really buckling down, just working on, you know, just working on me for the last couple months, trying to get my chops where they need to be. You know, we got, I got a couple good friends that just recently got picked up on bigger tours, you know, like, and it just, it just goes to show that St. Louis does breed good opportunity. You just got to be ready for it to come to you. I mean, like, shout out to guys like John Lum who are playing with Dev and Almond oh, on yeah. the road. And that's just such a great opportunity. You know, not only just playing for Dev and, like, John's, you know, building a relationship with Devin, you know. Yeah, They've man. been friends for a while, but it seems like they're really locking locking in. They just recorded that new record at Muscle Shoals. Yeah. Which, man, I'm super excited to hear that. So, For sure, dude. For sure, dude. Yeah, so St. Louis is a great place to be right now. There's a ton of opportunity. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, well, you know, as much as I do, like, I mean, there's so much cool stuff happening in town. I'm just trying to document as much of it as I can while I can and like right. like I mean there's which by the way you do a pretty good job I love Thanks, hitting man. your page on Friday just to kind of see what's going on you know the rare Friday that I do have off I'm always on your page just to see what I'm going to be doing you well, know thanks homie yeah people uh, really dig that stuff man so I'm, I'm glad that people are actually utilizing it and oh, and yeah. uh, so come check it out I think you almost uh, you, I almost you, said you almost, for sure <laughs> dude <laughs> It's going to be a drinking game for this one. Oh, yeah. no, yeah. yeah. Everybody, every time I say for sure, dude, you yeah. got to take a shot. Yeah. <laughs> you can exclude that one if you'd like, right. but, I mean, if you're, if you're feeling gung-ho, go for yeah. it, you know? Uh, but, uh, yeah, man, I'm, I'm glad people are digging it and uh, getting out and supporting live local music all over this uh, fine city of ours. So we've got a lot of a lot of things to offer. And like I say, man, there's, it's just cool that... You know, people are ready. People are are honing up their you know skills, and then are ready for the opportunity when things call yeah, and man. stuff. So like, like you know, John and everybody else that's hitting the road and doing these things. So we got a ton of great artists around here. That's why I just love being a part of St. Louis. It's um, I mean, you can go anywhere else in America to the quote unquote music cities, but you're not going to make the connections as easily, and you're not going to find the people who are willing to help you as much, in my opinion, as you will in St. Louis. Yeah. You know these within just an arm's reach. Come to the Gaslight and hang out. I tell people all the time, you want to be in a project? Come to the Gaslight and hang out sure. for a while. So many musicians come in here, man. Yeah. Go to open mics, talk to people. People are always down to play music with you guys, you know? A lot of my friends that aren't playing music right now, it's simply just because they don't want to, you know? Like, if they wanted to, they could go out, absolutely find a project to be in, you know? All right. Yeah, it, it, uh, yeah, big shout out to Gaslight. One, letting us hang out here and record, but. It definitely has seemed to become a, a hub of uh, St. Louis music, and right. you know, so like you're saying, so many artists, let alone performing here and everything else, and recording their records here. Uh, um, but you know, just hang out and have a cold beverage or right. eating some tacos. Shout out to groups so. like you know Bernie Sisters and Elliot Pearson and stuff that are you know kind of it's it's starting to happen. You know, we're cultivating you know great things you know in the st louis area and gaslight's definitely helping shout out to every other you know label that's doing the same thing i think that it's really all about just providing it an opportunity for people to enjoy music and people to promote music you know yeah man definitely well uh let's get on out of here and go eat some grammy sammies that sounds delicious uh, dude big shout out to gramophone too for providing all their deliciousness man oh that one i ran into uh, some of the guys of the crew over there the other day oh they, yeah they stopped by oyster bar and had some dinner and i was talking about that uh one with the the brisket and like mac and cheese oh and whatever, yeah we got like, that one. Oh, it was man, unreal i man. was like just like drooling looking at the picture i was like man looks yeah, awesome it was so good man. <laughs> yeah it, it makes sense the guys from gramophone hit up the oyster bar you know it takes one to know one yeah. for delicious food in the area yeah yeah, so like uh, it was it was fun to run into some of my homies over there on on my side of the town. Well, right on, so, man. I appreciate you having me. Yeah, thanks, Kyle. This has been uh, a lot of fun, man. Getting to getting to chat and uh, like I said, I'm I'm pumped to uh, to see what all's in store for you coming up here in uh, 2019, and uh, hopefully we'll do this again real soon with uh, some of the other groups. And, yeah, uh, man. I, I look forward to seeing you in the middle of next year with a bunch of really cool stuff and bunch of stuff out for you guys to kind of see what's popping yeah and again you can also uh catch kyle over at school of rock uh if you want to come over and learn some uh sweet guitar riffs and stuff and uh, you come learn whatever you want one thing i don't teach is is keyboard and singing we got to learn that and then the, in the ghetto way that i know how to do those things <laughs> <laughs> but it come teach bass guitar drums i'll teach it all to you yeah very cool yeah that's a that's a really neat thing man like and the fact that Giving those kids an opportunity to play on these big stages all over around the, the city and, and stuff, it's like, it's a really cool experience. Like, um, so I'm, right. that's a really neat thing you're a part of. So check it out, School of Rock. And uh, yeah, thanks, buddy. Thanks, Shane. Bye, everyone.
Rock paper, paper podcast. Rock paper podcast. Rock paper podcast. Rock paper podcast. Rock paper podcast. Well, yeah, that was it.